budget PCP build continues. So now we're going to add some bipod stroke sling studs to the uh, PR900W. So we'll fit one at the front and we'll fit one underneath at the back. So we can put the uh, budget £15 bipod on it. The set that we're going to use is this uh, Jack Pike set. Now, I don't really actively court sponsorship, but honestly, Jack Pike, if you wanted to get in touch, please do, because you're one of the few manufacturers that anything I've had of yours has been decent, you know, throughout the range, really. So, uh, yeah, please let me know if you want to uh, to hook up. That would be great. Anyway, enough of the corporate. Let's get on with the doing. Step one. In this case, you have to remove the optic. Just make it easier to handle the gun. Right. Now, take the gun out the stock. There's two screws underneath. Trigger guard screw. There we go. So carefully put the actual PCP part to one side flip it over let the screws drop out so I'll have to adjust the stock now in part what we're going to work on first it's forehand. Let's get it in shot, shall we? That'd be helpful. There we go. Right then. Whereabouts do we want to fit the bipod? I just said there, really, wouldn't you? Don't want it too far back because then your uh, actual pivot isn't great. If you want it really, sh if it's re really short, it's not very well balanced. At the same time, you don't want it so far forward that it's going to interfere with charging. So check your material thickness. I think I'm actually going to move it a little bit further back. I think I'm going to go for about here. There we go. So what sort of position is that? Up there, grab the pencil. Very rough blob. There we go. The way I'm going to do it is to use masking tape, which I have brought in with me, and I've now left. Now the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to use masking tape. So, as we've shown before, remove the pack from the masking tape. I hoped it wouldn't lift, lift the surface finish, but uh, nothing would surprise me. Follow. Fortunately, the forend on this is quite slabby, and there is a flat section across the front. So if you follow that, ideally, don't have any. There we go. Beautiful. There we go. This is just a spacer, really. The next bit of masking tape is the important bit. Again, remove the tack from your masking tape. Okay. 
we saw the point that we want to actually drill there. So if we just mark that through, tracing paper, there we go. Now, there's a couple of ways of doing this. And, uh, Genius Mark Novak, check him out on YouTube. His videos are fantastic. He showed uh, a video and explained how to do this. So, Mark here and here on your piece of tape. Now you can fold it, but sometimes that fold doesn't show through. It's a bit of a pain. Take your bit of tape back off. Fold it over itself, aligning your two marks. <laughs> I'm trying desperately not to have the masking tape stick together. It's looking there we go. Get your finger stuck in the masking tape. Perfect. And that is your center point. And when you put it back on, I'll give you the center point on your stock. We'll take back apart. There we go. Be careful during this point not to stretch the tape. Line the tape. And stop. Take it round. Straight as you can. There we go. So that tells us that this is the center point. Just using pencil, not going to dent the uh, rifle with pencil. We're going to do, do two marks through there, there. Take that off. There we go on that bit of tape. Grab a ruler. Grab a ruler. out. There we go. Now what you can also do, just as a check, use the uh, stock retaining holes. Put it, the ruler across the center of those. And yep, we are spot on. Absolutely perfect. Just rub that one out. So we don't get confused. Okay, there we go. Yep. So now we need to drill the hole. This is a bit where we need to get brave because this is where you put your money where your mouth is. Now I'm going to use a pillar drill for this hole purely because I uh, have one. If you haven't got one and you're feeling brave, just crack out the old handheld drill and go for it. What I am going to do before I drill this, before I put it in the clamp, just going to put some masking tape on the edges just to protect them from the jaws of the clamp.
Okay, so I've got it set up in the clamp on the pillar drill. You see I've got the uh, top of the stock level with the clamp. I'm going to go for a 3.5 millimeter drill bit because I consider that to give enough of the uh, teeth of the screw each side. Briefly considered using a 3.2, but the 3.5 I think will be perfectly adequate. So, I'm just going to pull this across to one side for a moment. You can see it's really well balanced. It's going to be a fun little juggling act. I'm pop the drill bit into the chuck of the drill. Whenever you stick a drill bit into either your handheld drill or pillar drill or whatever, you tighten it up, just give it a little spin to start with. Just have a look, make sure you're happy with how it's rotating. Now, as you can hear, my uh, drill is quite old and has quite a bit of chatter. But that'll be okay. So, without further, there we go. Oh, no. It does this sometimes. Just gonna bring the platform up slightly. There we go. Oh, no. Yeah, I think this drill's getting a bit old now. <laughs> Okay, so, if, it, if it'll let me talk. Let's drill this hole. There we go. And I'm going to drill all the way through. Just going to very carefully walk it through, bringing the chips out. But with any luck, we don't blow out the back of the hole. That's almost true, I can feel it. There we go, she's through. stage is something that my father <laughs> please forgive the uh, repositioning of the camera there the uh, stock decided to fall back and I had to uh, make a decision between punching the uh, <laughs> the phone stand or catching the stock and uh, yeah it was um, catch the stock and punch the phone stand at the same time right the next step is something my father-in-law actually taught me we're just going to take a countersink to that hole, just stress relieve it so that to uh, make it a bit easier for winding the stud into the hole. There we go, beautiful. Okay. Now we need to wind our stud in. Start it by hand. And use a punch, hex key, just something suitable. Just gently wind it in. A bit like using a tap and die set, just back it off, just as you're relieving the stress. Thing you want to do is split your stock. Uh, are we going to need to use a spacer, or is it going to be? Oh my goodness me! Well, that has never happened to me before. I've said that before. That's perfection. Look at that. It's actually finished winding in in exactly the position we want it to be in. My goodness. Wow, look at that.
Well, I'm going to take the masking tape off. Okay, so happy with how that went. Bipod. Remember we uh, said before about how awkward this is. By the way, I use the Royal Wee not because I have a split personality. I'm trying to uh, include everybody. It's uh, the shooting family. Here we go. Little beauty. Look at that. Beauty. Wonderful. <laughs> now, just one thing to be careful of. When you do this, just make sure that the stud hasn't wound through and uh, is then going to hit your cylinder. That's uh, not the case. Here, it stopped just short. I'm just going to drop a countersink into that hole just to clear it up a bit. More for my anal retentiveness than anything else. Beauty. Yeah, job well done. Now, for the bit that uh, I was actually dreading. Let's put a sling stud in the butt. This is one of those jobs that can go seriously wrong. But uh, let's keep our fingers crossed here. Let's, uh, let's go into this glass half full. Because... It'll be empty by the time we've finished. Right, this is the uh, really fun bit. We want to stick another stud in. And this time we want to stick our stud in the butt. Stop giggling at the back. Now there's a few things you really need to be cautious of. So, one, position of the uh, butt pad retaining screw. That's here, gonna go through to about there. So that means our stud ideally needs to be about here, just so that it clears it. So that's, that's probably not a bad, probably not a bad spot for it about there. So now we've got to try and work out the center point of the butt. Now that's gonna be a bit more difficult and possibly a bit subjective. But uh, we'll get there. We'll figure it out. Now I'm going to use a measure. Don't use them as a rule. <laughs> I tell you, I'm full of them. Well, I'm full of something. Right. Using the logo, just assuming it's central. And then aligning it with what I think is the centre of the butt pad. going to be our method of attack. Get tacky off of that. Okay. Okay. Forgive me not talking while I'm doing this. I'm trying to concentrate. I know uh, you probably think if I stop talking, I must be ill or something. I do tend to jabber on, hence my suggestion previously of a Q and A session where uh, instead of me wittering on about rubbish, I just go through some questions that you've got. It can be about anything, by the way. It doesn't have to be about guns or uh, that sort of thing. If you want relationship advice, I'd just describe your situation. Just nothing about your stepsister or your stepmom, hey. I don't want to know. I, I, I just I, I don't want to know. If, if you're going to do it and she looks like Corey Chase, go for it. And if your stepsister looks like Alexa Grace, go for it. 
Otherwise, well, it's up to you. It's up to you. Right. Enough wittering. Yeah, I'm going to go for that. I'm going to go for that. So, as we've mentioned before, our screw is going to go in like this. We need to miss our butt pad screw, which is coming through there. So, I'm just going to whip that butt pad screw out just to see how long it is. Again, the butt pad screw is Phillips. They always seem to be Phillips. That's a good line. <laughs> oh dear. We're back to the uh, Q&A session. Right, okay. Yeah, that's the length of it. So... As long as we essentially go for somewhere like this, I would say we're safe. Put it back in. bit used before so successfully onto the pillar drill. There we go. This is the part that nightmares are made of. Quite a short butt, really. I'm going to go for 40 millimeters, inch and a half down. Perfect. Right. The hole is going to have to be half on the tape, half off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get it started. And then, then I'm going to work my angle. So that is 90 degrees vertically. And we're doing this way. Okay. Be brave now. Next, I'm going to go quite a way longer than the length of the screw. And that is purely so there's no stress concentration at the bottom of the hole. I don't want it to split my stock. bonus being a bit of weight reduction. Ask anybody who's ever had to carry rifles for a long time, what would you most like to do with that rifle? Pretty well all of them will say, just take a bit of weight out, please. Some of them will say throw it in the river. I'll just countersink that hole. Stress out the top. Position. I think my hands just shook. You can see this is a nerve wracking job. Hmm. 
just going to go a little bit bigger on that hole. Just going to take the top part of the hole, say about a quarter of an inch, if that, maybe less, just out to four millimeters, just to ease the passage of the stud. There we go, perfect. A World War II punch from the Browning factory. How oh, it made its way into my hands is another story. Maybe turning in the graves at the thought of it being used on a Chinese budget gun. Who knows? I think. I think I'm going to have another fluke here. Do you know what? Here we are. Yep, beautiful. Yeah, wonderful. See, now, Jack Pike set does come with these white washers. And with it, um, they are designed basically to put a little soften, soften up between the uh, wood and the stud, stop it from bruising the wood or uh, splitting it potentially. And just to give you also the, uh, these will crush so as you can just do a lot of little sort of quarter turn, whatever of alignment, but we haven't needed them. I think it looks all the better for it. So, yeah, we are done. I'll put the rifle back together. We'll stick a sling on it and uh, we'll do a final little show and tell. Now, if you ever needed a reason why not to buy cheap, you're supposed to be able to fit your standard sling attachment through that. And... The hole's too small. <laughs> oh, would you believe it? Stud at the back just to prove that this uh, isn't the wrong item. This is quite fiddly while trying to hold the uh, camera, but anyway. There we go, see? Perfect fit. So now I'm going to have to go in the garage and drill out those holes so as now I can fit my sling. Okay, so after that brief rush into the garage to make a last minute modification, there we go. On sling fitted, bipod on, rifles coming together, They're looking pretty good. A couple more mods planned, and then uh, we'll take her out on the range again, see how she's getting on. Fold the edge of the tape, and again, this side, with your bit of tape. Off. Those two fold lines give you the exact, how can you put it, circumference, I suppose, of your stock. So put those two pieces together, like so, there you go. Don't do it massively tight, so you don't get your fingers stuck in it. Fold it over, mark that fold line with your pencil. And that is your halfway point. So, I love working in masking tape. Right up there with cling film. Not that I'm a gasper or anything. 